Hello fifth grade. So today we are going to make this sculpture in the round. Our learning objective is to create a sculpture in the round. And a sculpture in a round is a sculpture that is meant to be viewed all the way around from all different sides. And obviously the subject of our sculpture in the round is going to be a fish. So you need, as you're creating your fish today out of clay, you need to be looking at it from all angles and all sides to see if it looks nice, if you smoothed out your cracks, um, is it interesting to look at, did you attach everything correctly. So a sculpture in the round is meant to be viewed from all sides. And remember last year we created relief sculptures. Relief sculptures are sculptures that are only meant to be viewed from one side, the front. The back, there isn't anything to see. It's not interesting. They're not meant to be walked around and looked at from all sides. They're just meant to be viewed from the front. <clears throat> so this year we are creating a sculpture in the round with a fish. And these two fish are examples of just the standard fish that you have to make today. Your fish needs to have eyes. The mouth needs to be open. That's very, very important. Your fish should have a top fin, a clear separated back tail, and then two side fins. Now, if you are fast today and you have lots of time or some time left over at the end, you can add things to your fish. You could add purses or hats or eyelashes. You could add teeth or a tongue. You can add baby fish attached to the side of your fish or baby fish that sit inside the mouth. Whatever you can come up with, whatever your imagination can come up with that you can create out of clay, you can add to your fish. But here is what you have to have at the end of art today. Because remember, when you make your clay fish, you only get today to create it. Because the next time I see you, the clay will be too dry to work with. So you got to get it done today. So you need to start with your tools. You have your clay tools, you have your cup of slip, basically a cup of water, and some newspaper. You're going to have a cardboard mat slab of clay. <clears throat> now, this slab has some cracks in it and it kind of wants to break in apart. So if you get a crummy slab for me, it's not very nice. I apologize. It's just what I got. But you can work with that. You can kind of pick it up and where these cracks are, you can kind of shove them back together, press them back together, take your fingers and drag them across those cracks and smooth those cracks out. Try to make them stronger and not so weak. Flip it over, do that same thing on the back, and then look at your slab. Is your slab evenly cut? Did I cut a pretty good job and the slab is pretty even? Or is your slab skinnier in one space and thicker in another space? If your slab is even and it's not too thick, you can probably work with it as is. But this slab is probably a little too thick to work with. It's a nice cut job. I did a pretty good job of cutting it. But sometimes you're, some of you are going to get slabs that are much skinnier on one side and thicker on the other. And if that's the case, you've really got to tap or pat, pat with the palm of your hand the side that's too thick. You've got to make it thinner. Remember to use the palm of your hand, not your fist. You're going to get bumps in your, in your slab. Your slab won't be smooth. It'll be bumpy because you've got your knuckles in there. And as you work, you want to always be peeling your clay up off of the cardboard. Otherwise, it'll get stuck to the cardboard. So the first thing that you do, once you have a nice slab, you want to cut off about a fourth or a third of your slab cut a quarter of your slab off. Um, it could be as much as a third, but you don't really want to go more than that because then it doesn't leave you a lot of clay for the body of your fish. And then you have all this extra clay and if you run out of time, you don't even get to use it. And then look at what you have left over. If it's a square shape, doesn't matter which way you fold it, this way or this way, it doesn't matter. But if it's more of a rectangular shape, depending on how you fold it, you could end up with a shorter, fatter, plumper mat fish or you could end up folding it the other way and having a longer, skinnier fish. But I'm going to go ahead and fold up my fish. Now this fish is called a taco fish because when you fold it up, it kind of looks like a taco. So it's made similar to the shape of a taco. So you're going to bend this up. Now if you start to bend your clay up and it's cracking really bad down here, which mine is not, but if yours does, just take your finger and pull it across with a little bit of pressure and smooth that crack out. So I'm going to bring this, these two pieces up together and I'm going to pinch them together. 
once I pinch them together, I need to make sure that this stays open. So if I have a decent thickness of slab, it should stay open pretty easily. But if this is a real thin slab, it's going to want to start to fold and collapse. <clears throat> so um, keep an eye on that. But open, look through it and make sure you can see all the way through it, that there's a big old hole in there. Now take your finger and smooth out the top seam. Get it, Make that go away. And you can take it just by smoothing your finger across, or you can pinch it with your finger. And then I need to close the end of my fish off for the tail. So I want to pick the end of the fish that doesn't look very good. The, the end that looks pretty clean and neat, that should be the mouth of my fish. So this end is pretty clean and neat. This end <coughs> is a little more crummy. So I'm going to close this end up. Close it up, pinch it, get rid of the seam just by pulling my finger across. And now I have an opening, but it's closed on one end. So the, what I want you to do now is look at your fish and see, is it going to stay up or is it starting to really want to close down on you? If it's going to stay up and open, you could probably leave it alone for a little while. But if it's not going to, you, this is when you need this newspaper. Take little pieces of newspaper and shove it into the mouth of your fish. Now if you have a real thin wall, when you shove this newspaper in, it could tear a hole in the side of your fish. So be careful, but you want to push this newspaper back. If you think you're going to add teeth or tongue or something inside your fish, you're going to want to push this newspaper far back. And this newspaper just stays inside your fish. And then when I fire it, I'll fire it with the newspaper in there. And <clears throat> when you get your fish back from me, you'll have little white flakes inside your fish that you can dump out in the trash can. But you're going to leave the newspaper in there so it holds your fish standing up, sitting up. So now I have a fish that has one continuous fin and a tail. And remember that one of the criteria for your fish is to have a clearly separated top fin and back tail. So I'm going to pinch right here and pull this off of my fish so that I get um, a cut here that's the top fin and then this part's gone so this would be the back tail. But if I reach too deep into my fish, I'm going to get a hole. So i got to stay up here. I reach in, pinch, and pull. And I pulled a pretty substantial chunk off there, but now you can clearly see this is the back fin and this is the tail. So now I'm going to use my fingers to pinch and smooth these edges, get rid of any cracks or crevices that are there, just by pinching and touching and pushing with my finger. And this tail here looks like a pretty good tail, but it's pretty chunky and thick, so I'm going to take and just pinch and pull it a little bit so that it makes it a little bit thinner, more like a real fish and not like a sh chunk or a real thick tail on the back. And then the same for the fins. Now, at this point, I want you to look at your fish. If you have lots of cracks and crevices, lots of seams, take your finger and get all those off there because those aren't going to magically disappear in the kiln. They'll still be there. They won't go away. And look at both sides of your fish. And now would be a great time that if you want your fish to kind of be curved or bent, that you do that. And so you can kind of just bend and curve your fish and make him do what you want him to do. Especially if you have a decent size thickness of your slab. If your slab is really, really thin, you're gonna have to be careful when you do this. You don't wanna tear a hole in the side of your fish. But if you have a pretty good thick fish, this should be pretty easy to do. So I made my fish kind of wavy. And I can leave the top fin like this or I could start pinching parts of it off so I can get like a spiky tail or spiky fin up here and it'll just give me a little bit of extra clay to work with later. I could leave it straight. Um, I've had people that wanted to make sharks so they cut out a big triangle and they attached it to the top by scoring and slipping. You could do that if you want. Um, the tail, there's nothing that says the tail has to match the top fin so I could leave the tail straight and flat and not make it spiky. So now I need to do the eyes of my fish. Now if you look at my fish, he's starting to get a little droopy. But the reason he's getting a little droopy and his mouth starting to close a little bit is because I keep picking up my fish. But that's good because I don't want him to get stuck to the cardboard. But I also want to make sure that he's not rolling around on the table. So if I tap him a little bit and keep make the bottom of him flat, <clears throat> he'll sit on the table nice and he won't um, be rolling all over the place. Okay, so this top fin to me seemed a little bit thick in the front, so I'm pinching it gently and making it a little bit thinner. Okay, so now I need to do my eyes. So that's when this extra clay comes in. You want to take some of the extra clay and you want to roll it into two spheres. 
Now the eyes do not have to be the same size. They can be the same size and if they are, if you want them the same size then you want to pinch off two equal amounts of clay. But I don't really care if my eyes are the same size. I think it adds a little bit of character if one eye is a little bit bigger than the other. But that might be very important to you. So now we're going to take two pieces of clay, two separate pieces, and we're going to put them together. So we need to score and slip. So I like to use a fork, but a popsicle stick will work too. You're going to draw crisscross lines on the side of the sphere, and you're going to draw crisscross lines on the side of your fish, the front where the mouth is, the opening. You're going to do crisscross lines, add a little bit of water, which is slip, and then take and press the eye on there and use the palm of your hand to press the eye on there firmly. The eyes are, tend to be the first things that fall off the fish because either the person didn't score and slip or they just simply didn't press with the palm of their hand firm enough to get it stuck on there. And I think why people don't do that is they want their eyes to be perfect circles, but I think <clears throat> if you push your eyes on there firmly with the palm, it flattens it a little bit, but it still stays circular. And that way, even if you flatten them a little bit, at least you know they're attached and they won't fall off. All right, I do want them circular though, so don't press so hard they become flat pancakes on the side. Now I'm going to use a round doll rod to make the holes in the fish's eyes. And I can just take this round doll rod and press it in, or I could use a popsicle stick and kind of get a Kermit the Frog eye by pressing that on the side. Um, I could use a really big, round, thick doll rod, which I thought I, here we go, here's one. If the eye is big enough, I could take this and press that into the eye. <clears throat> and there's nothing that says the eyes have to be the same, but that's what you do either with the big one or the round doll rod, the bigger small round, round doll rod, or you can use a popsicle stick to kind of get Kermit the Frog eye, but I kind of want the circles to be the same. So I'm gonna just take this doll rod and press that into the eye and get rid of that Kermit the Frog eye. Okay, so here's my fish. I need side fins and then I've met the requirements and then I can add anything else I want to add to it. So with this leftover fit clay piece, um, I need to pat it into a pancake, but this is already pretty much in a slab and it's pretty good. So I need to cut two triangles out of here because that's what the shape of the side fins are. So here's one triangle. And if I want my side fins to be exactly the same, I take my triangle, I lay it down on top of the clay, and I cut another one out that's the same size. So I use the top one as a pattern. But if that's not important to you, like the eyes don't have to be the same size, neither do the side fins. But here are the side fins, and then here's my extra clay that I can use to add any other details. So I need to score and slip. And I take the top of the triangle, push it on the side of the fish. I'm going to put my finger inside so that my fish doesn't collapse when I press on the side of it and close up on the inside. Your fish has to stay open. The mouth has to stay open or it might explode in the kiln. And so this fin is really thick and chunky, so I'm going to pinch it a little bit and make it a little bit thinner, and I'm going to pull it forward. But you can do whatever you want. You can pinch part of the ends of this fin off so it can be spiky like my top fin. You can draw things on there. Another thing you can do is take a popsicle stick, get it wet, and you can press it into the side of your clay. It makes perfect scales. You could take um, a pointy, sharp part of the fork and draw patterns. You could take the round doll rod and poke that on the side to get polka dots. You could do the big round doll rod to do polka dots. And, and after that, whatever, if you have time, whatever you want to add. So I've had hooks, I've had um, top hats, I've had purses, I've had hair added, whatever you want but score and slip it and make sure it's pretty thick and chunky. Like you don't want to do a real thin, delicate tongue that sticks really far out of your fish's mouth. It'll break off when it dries. So you kind of have to, anything you add that sticks out, it can't stick out too far. It needs to be scored and slipped. And um, when you're finished with your fish, you'll bring it to me. I'll scrape your initials and room number on it. We'll put it on the cart to dry. In a couple weeks, you'll get it back. It'll be fired and then we'll glaze it and then I'll fire it again and then Hello fifth grade. So today you are going to glaze your fish. You're going to get your fish back. Um, it's going to be hard. You might have some little uh, um, 
burnt up papers inside the mouth, so you might have to turn your mouth over and kind of dump that out and just put that in the trash can. Don't dump it out onto the table and certainly don't breathe it in. Keep it away from your face. Keep it away from your neighbor's face. So you're gonna use glaze today and glaze, it kind of looks like paint and it dries really, really fast on your clay and it dries kind of chalky in texture and chalky in look. And then when I fire your piece a second time, that chalkiness will go away and it'll become this gorgeous, shiny glass coating on your clay. So um, when you paint your fish, you can have um, two different size paintbrushes. If you need another super tiny paintbrush that's smaller than the smallest one, you can obviously have it because I want you to paint your fish as neatly as possible. You're gonna get lots of choices of different colors for glazes so that you can glaze your fish in any pattern uh, that you want. I like to start with the eyes first and get a nice thick coating of glaze. That's what I want you to focus on when you're glazing your fish. Not only do I want you to focus on neatness and what cool pattern or, or how what color neat colors you want to add to your fish, but I want you to also focus on putting a thick layer of glaze on your fish. So unfortunately right now I'm doing the eyes and they're white and the clay is white so you can't really see what I'm doing. But I want you to put a thick layer on. If it's clumpy, then you need to smooth those clumps out. Don't leave them just sitting there on top of the clay. So smooth them out and try to get most of the glaze off your paintbrush before you go to rinse it. Glaze is very expensive, so let's not be wasteful. I don't wanna take this paintbrush that's full of glaze right now and put it in the water because then the glaze just goes to the bottom of the water basin and doesn't get to be used. So I've put a nice thick layer of white glaze on my eyes. I could go back and do a second coat once it's dry. Um, I want to get most of this glaze off the, my paintbrush though. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off. We, all, we need a very dry paintbrush, so I'm going to dry it off on the sponge. I'm going to use this thin paintbrush and a little bit of black and try to get inside the eye here. But that's going to be pretty tricky and trying to keep it neat. So now I'm going to get any extra glaze I have on my paintbrush off. Rinse my paintbrush off, dry it off. Now I'm gonna go back to the bigger paintbrush and pick a color for my fish. If you wanna do like polka dots on your fish, you wanna color your fish probably the lightest color first, the whole fish, all one color, and then you can go back with a darker color and do polka dots on top of that glaze. If you wanna do stripes, you probably then need to just paint the stripes. So if I was gonna do blue and black stripes, I probably would paint a blue stripe, leave some space, paint a blue stripe, leave some space, paint a blue stripe, and then go back and add my black between the blue. Um, if you want to paint one side, one color, one side, the other, that's fine. But what I want you to keep in mind is you're never going to glaze the bottom of your fish, the part that touches the table. If you glaze the bottom of your fish, it will fuse to my kiln and I won't be able to fire it because I would have to use a hammer and a chisel to get it out of my kiln. So you're going to glaze your fish um, all the way to the bottom edge but you're gonna stop when it touches the table. So you might even wanna leave your fish on the table and glaze it like this, so that you know that you're not glazing the part that's touching the table. If you have enough time to do a second coating of the color, that's a wonderful idea. You will be happier with your piece if you have a thick layer of glaze. So if you glaze it once and then go back over with the same color, not a different color, because that wouldn't make any sense. The same color, covering it up with a second layer of the same color, that would um, probably make you happy because your fish will be really shiny and smooth to the touch. When you paint or glaze inside your mouth, just glaze as far back as you can, um, maybe a couple of inches into the mouth, maybe not as far back as you can shove your paintbrush because that's a little wasteful of glaze, but you do want to paint the inside or the glaze the inside of your mouth a little bit. Also, if you're glazing the front of your fish, you'll just glaze, when you get to the bottom of your mouth, you'll just glaze the front of the mouth and then go up and around. You will not glaze the bottom of the mouth that sits on the table. So you wanna be careful right around the mouth when you're glazing. And then when you're finished, you'll clean up, you'll give me your fish back, I'll fire it a second time. It'll come back shiny and beautiful and bright in color, covered in this glass coating from the glaze and um, you'll be able to take it home and show it off to your family. Good job, fifth grade, way to go.